A to the K. A to the K. A to the K. CM Punk fired by Tony Khan. Jack Perry suspended indefinitely. We have an update on Carlito's WWE status. Sonny Kiss is gone from AEW. CJ Perry debuts for AEW, but she's not signed with the company? Well, Brian Danielson gives an update on his future. Speaking of updates, we've got an update on the future of Jade Cargill. Very AEW heavy this today. Is it? Oh, then yeah. on comes Jay. Oh, sorry. Uh, so WWE has high hopes for Jay Uso's singles run. And is Cody Rhodes headed to smack? Probably. Him? Whatever he wants to do, basically. And see when's all going up? Right freaking now. Yes, it is. So. 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 Kind of awkward this one, isn't it? Uh, as we spoke about on the show last week, uh, CM Punk and Gentleman Jack Perry. Um, I don't know. That was a gimmick. Were both. They had a little fight backstage. Um, and they were both suspended. Uh, Tony Khan has since released a statement uh, basically confirming CM Punk, aka Phil Brooks, has been terminated from AEW with cause, which is a very important note in terms of his termination, because um, he could theoretically challenge that if he wants to and be like, there is no cause. Um, but, yeah, so, again... <laughs> I fired him because... <laughs> there's no... Um, there's no guarantee exactly what went down. I think only Tony and um, Punk know. But I mean, Tony's made a certain. potentially kind of dramatic statement. He said about fearing for his life. He it? has. He said, I mean, to be fair, May not it's not life. the first time this has happened. And the last time it happened, a brawl out before brawl in. And there were several people involved. You know, people got bit and it wasn't by the dog. It was by a steel. Um, so you can kind of get it. That was probably should have been enough. But then it's happened again. Um, and yeah, Tony obviously doesn't want to put anyone else in danger. But yeah, the fact that he also said he's never had to fear for his it's, life before is interesting. We don't know the ins and outs of it, so no. it's not really uh, right to speculate. But I'm gonna. Oh yeah, um, do. I do feel this time around, and I was talking about this roughly last week that there's a blatant attempt to push his buttons there by. Oh yeah. right, and you can see that in the fact that he was like essentially goading him on the camera there. Um, so part of me is a bit like, have they just, have the right people just pushed his buttons until he snapped again? And oh, okay, yeah, you shouldn't have somebody with a short fuse on your roster, but yeah. I just feel like they've kind of pushed him into it this time, which is a bit, yeah, a bit naughty, really. Uh, uh, Jim Cornette said, didn't he? Um, he, spe- he spoke on the situation and basically said he flew him to Atlanta for, for a sit down with the elite, which then got cancelled last minute. He then flew him over to the UK. But he didn't arrange any transportation for him. He had to get on his, on the, the tube. Got yeah. lost on the tube. <laughs> um, Which is frustrating in itself. Then made it to, obviously, um, the arena, um, only to basically, in the very first match of the cards, be fucking called out on you know TV by some little prick. Uh, so to Jim Cornette's point, is like, well, what the fuck did you expect him to do? Yeah. But at the same time, you can't be, like, punching people. Um, no. But the trouble is, this is what I'm saying, and I'm not saying you should work around the fact that he's like this, but they know what he's like. And I feel like they've, because Tony's kept them on, certain people have gone out of the way to push his buttons yeah. to get this result. Yeah. Um, which is a shame. Look at, like, I don't, I, I quite like Kenny Omega and the Elite. I, I like what they do. I like, you know, and I'm going to, people, I like what they do. But I'm going to continue to do so, but mm. like, they are fucking childish sometimes. Did you see the uh, Be the Elite segment? Where um, Kenny Omega's trying Pepsi and stuff. Well, like that. It's like, he's he's apparently come out and said it was water with electrolytes. Yeah, but they were having like Chicago pizza and stuff like that. Like they were, it, I, I they were know, in Chicago. They were blatantly making jabs. They were in Chicago. Coke and stuff. Like you can see that they're doing little petty things. You know what yeah. I mean? No, like, of course. And it is kind of it's challenge. it's the whole point of that their show, isn't it? And unfortunately, the, it's moved on to a point where there is little jabs happening everywhere, and that's why there's multiple. Things go like we've already had Sammy Guevara and Andrade getting fights backstage. Eddie Kingston, Sammy Guevara, mm. Sammy's still here. Do you know what I mean? But it's like, yeah. but Punk now isn't. Um, but bit... and this is where I don't want to speculate too much because he's obviously done something enough to merit yeah. it. I don't think they've took that decision lightly, no, especially right before All Out in Chicago. Yeah, it's like, a hell of a decision I don't think for him to make that decision lightly. I, I thought if it was at all possible for him to be there, Tony would have had him there for the fact it was Chicago, yeah. but obviously it wasn't. You know, according to Uncle Dave, so you take it with a massive grain of salt as we always do. Like, he apparently lunged at Tony, monitors were knocked over, and he's since then gone on to say it was more than lunging. So, 
don't know what did. <laughs> oh, the lunging, trying to give him a Pepsi plunge of his own, maybe. But um, yeah, it's a, it's a, it is very unfortunate. Now, there's people who are very happy by this decision, people who are gutted by this decision. Um, I just think it's a, sh- it's a shame, regardless of how you look at it, because there was still so much for him to do. He hasn't fought Brian Danielson. Yeah. In AEW. Yeah, from a potential match point of view, it MJF is a really shame. Could have, you know, again. Well, I thought they were going to revisit that with the real world championship. That had yeah. to come to a head at some point. But yeah. sadly, there's a lot of mispotential here. Indeed. A lot of mispotential. Um, yeah, it's, it's a massive shame, unfortunately. Uh, and you know, there's people now speculating he's going to go back to WWE. There's, 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 <laughs> there's, there's a wild, wild thing saying that um, there was talk. Not none of this is backed up, but apparently there was talk about him being at the last Royal Rumble and coming in and work, working a program with Kevin Owens. But I'm like, yes. really? I don't, I don't know, because it seems he's not very well liked over in WWE. A lot no, of people are sharing good. that video again of uh, Seth calling him a cancer. Yeah. Um. So it's not like he's he's very well liked there. I understand there's like, he clearly was the highest met seller for AEW. Mm-hmm. I understand there's a thing there. But when you've got somebody who's so sort of notably... Um, what's the word? Volatile. Volatile <laughs> backstage. I like it. It's a good word. Um, you gotta wonder, like, would WWE even want the aggro? Yeah. Like, I don't actually think, as much as he is a merch seller, I don't think he's really gonna add much to WWE. He's currently like really successful situation. You know, selling Bloodline t-shirts and Cody Rhodes t-shirts left and right. Yeah. I think that bothered. Well, all I can say is, look in my eyes. What do you see? A bunch of volatility. Nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, Punk's gone. Uh, obviously, AEW carried on with All Out. Uh, we'll be doing our um, reaction review on that as well, so make sure you check that out. Yes, but, we will. Yeah, let's see what the future of AEW looks like without all Phil Brooks. Mm. So, Jack Perry. <laughs> oh yeah, the other guy. Yeah. Um, him? He uh, On the back of this, just as a, as a quick update, apparently he remains suspended indefinitely. So um, obviously the this was requ- uh, requested. This was asked about at the post media from or all out, and um, basically Tony didn't give too much away. Sort of stressed the fact that you know they've, they've investigated the situation. He remains suspended currently, and um, you know just kind of brushed it off as much as he could. But for me, I'm like this kid's got that much ego already. I'm not sure, man. Like, <clears throat> we've already got the, the, the anti-punk people saying like this is the guy that got rid of CM Punk and there's a big like fucking yeah. following of people now who's all, all I was like, let's say you, you like this is what I don't understand let's say you agree that, that punk is, is a cunt right and that's why you wanted rhythm as a fan or as a wrestler right mm. do you want somebody who's been equally cunty to do it or have no. you just created the next generation of punk who's gonna have the same problems like, he's quite fresh in the business, if we're being honest, and he's already being like that. I don't yeah. know. I, 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 don't think, uh, I don't think he's made himself look very good at all. And I know people are really concentrating on the punk situation, but I think um, being as um, disrespectful and antagonistic as he's been over the, the whole glass spot, which was, uh, in all honesty, him trying to talk about a safety situation, wasn't it, mm-hmm. really? I, I don't know. It just feels to me a bit like he's, um, he's being a bit of a prick. Yeah. He's, um, he tried to pass know. it off as saying he's just playing the heel. Yeah, and it's like, well, There's what do you pl- mean? Because people wouldn't have got that reference. Exactly, that's, that's not playing the heel. That's that's a, being that's a, a shot of punk, right? Yeah. Like, and um, and this is the thing where I'm like, I, I don't know what's gonna happen with the suspension. I imagine he'll come back at some point, but hmm. I, I I was never big on uh, Jack Perry anyway. His new persona it just doesn't wash at all because he's not a tough guy, but he's pretending to be one. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I don't know. I just feel like his ego's probably gonna end up going wild with this now. Yeah, wild, you say? Running wild out in the jungle. <gasps> yeah, I, I can't really add any any more to what you've said. Um, really, I mean, we can we can make the joke that that we made before, where it's like you know, oh no, he's suspended. He gets to stay home with his with his wife, with, with, his, wife. with, with his, uh, his attractive girlfriend. Um, <laughs> you know, ah, oh, what a punishment. But yeah, it's interesting the fact that um, I think th- he said he's been suspended indefinitely. So since all in, he's not been around to en- anything. But mm. he's, he has to give any kind of update. He just said, like, he'll be back in 30 days, 60 no, days or anything. No, that doesn't so. give any indication how long the suspension is. Just yeah. Indefinite. Yeah. So, interesting nonetheless. Mm-hmm. Uh, speaking of things that are interesting, we've covered this a couple of times now. Carlito, um, obviously, he came back on the Rumble a while ago. Everyone expected him to sign with WWE. That never happened. He then came back at Backlash um, for, like, a little running spot. 
and um, it was announced at the time that he had to cancel some upcoming indie dates and stuff. Right. So it was like, oh, he must have signed with WWE then. Yeah. Well, there's apparently murmurs now that he has been spending time down in NXT. Interesting. Not to learn or anything, but instead he's been working on his character and filming vignettes. Vignettes, you say? Which is interesting. Mm-hmm. Like people know Carlito as, you know, is he going to come with a different character now? Or is he going to be the, like... Apple spitting legend that we all know and love. Um, so it's an interesting take. I don't know how, you know, how much weight you can put on it because it's probably from a dirt sheet somewhere. It's not like it's come from a super credible source. Um, super credible. Super credible. But yeah, what, what do you make of this? He's down in NXT filming vignettes. I am. Um, look, let's be honest, right? People are going to love Carly Toby and back for the nostalgia initially. I think. Coming back with a new gimmick would be a bad move. I think he should come back as the nostalgic pop that we want, mm-hmm. as Carlito, Caribbean Cool. Yeah. Transition into a new gimmick by all means, but mm-hmm. I think to, if they're working on something and then he comes back as a different character, then that's yeah. not what we're after exactly. because we want the Carlito we remember, yeah. not, not this new generation's Carlito. That's why when he was there in uh, Backlash, he had his old music and everything, right. didn't he? And he had the apple because it was like, it's Carlito. Like, basically what I'm saying is, I don't want change. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, know. how cool would it be if he comes back like very soon? And wins the United States Championship and then gets to get in the ring again with John Cena like the old days. That'd be pretty fun. And then Jesus comes out of nowhere. And it's like, not again. And then Jesus from nowhere. Um, and then Bob Buchanan's <laughs> back. <laughs> Could you imagine? Um, B squared for life. But yeah, so interesting. Mm. Maybe we'll see. If he's filming vignettes, it kind of makes you think that they've got at least an idea for him. Whether or not that makes TV is a whole different question. But <laughs> just film vignettes and see what happens. Indeed. Well, yeah, hopefully we'll see him soon. Indeed. Speaking of people we're going to see soon, or not, as the case, that was a bad segment. Yeah. Anyway, Sonny Kiss, a lot of people noticed last week, I believe it was, that uh, he was no longer on the AEW roster page, and this led to speculation <coughs> as to his AEW status. Well, Tony Khan has now confirmed that he absolutely loves Sonny Kiss. Sonny Kiss is a fantastic wrestler. He wishes he could keep Sonny Kiss, but unfortunately, we can't renew everyone's contracts or some BS like that. Yeah. So basically, what he's saying is, yeah, I'm not renewing his contract. It's gone. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it was better than uh, better than some of the firings he's done. <laughs> to be fair, what was um, you know, the big swole situation? <laughs> he hasn't come on gone. He wasn't a good wrestler. Anyway. Even any good. So okay. <laughs> you know, at least he's uh, yeah. yeah. At least Tony Khan's give um, uh, Sonny some credit. I mean, it's one of them where you go. It's difficult, isn't it? Because part of me is like, well, I kind of get it because they weren't doing anything like particularly uh, crowd drawn. And then, you know, you go, like you say, you've got, you can't keep everyone. Yeah. But then on the other grain is like, well, to be fair, it's that kind of business. So they weren't giving them work. Then how do you yeah. do anything with that? You know what I mean? So yeah. like, he made it's, a really it's good difficult. Point. In it, like, because he's not, in, sorry, they're, they're not in charge of creative. So. Yeah. TV times controlled, isn't it? So yeah. I don't know. Like you, you can't really just go. Well, you were, you know. Yeah. I mean, Tony made a really good point. Is that Sonny was a, kind of a constant on the likes of Dark and Elevation, which mm-hmm. no longer exist. Yeah. Um, saying that though, I did kind of feel like is that a little bit of a cop out because he mentioned there's only five hours of TV to work with now, mm. which he still managed to do that anyway with Dark and Elevation, but he completely ruled out Ring of Honor. Now we've seen yeah. some of the talent, like Griff Garris. Griff Garrison's on Ring of Honor, killing it. Nice. Do you know what I mean? He's not yeah. quite really griff. I think so, it is a bit of a cop-up when you don't want to be yeah. the bad guy. That's when but you're also, making these excuses. Isn't it, he's really? not the bad guy because he's a businessman. And even though he's got a lot of fucking money. Um, not got all the money. You know, he can't just lose all his money. And at the end of the day, if he's no plans with Sonny Kiss, then what's the point in keeping Sonny Kiss on the roster? It doesn't make right, any exactly. sense. So, and it does make you wonder, like, because like, there's plenty of people I think are super talented who he's not using. And you've got to wonder now, is he going to start using them or uh, is he going to start with more yeah. releases? You know? And he was quite candid in, 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 when he answered the question. Is, he's you know, maybe a little bit shot at WWE-ish, but saying he's been, he's tried his best not to do like a big wave of releases and firings yeah. and stuff. Yeah, he, he does let contracts. He's supported everybody way. through the pandemic. He's kept people on you know, when he probably didn't need to. Mm. So if anything, I don't think anyone can really give him any flack. No, I think, look, at the end of the day, it is business, and I, I admire the fact that it is like, that's your contract expiry, and, you know, you can't guarantee a renewal. It's better than, well, this is your contract, and a week later, well, we're actually going to relieve you from that contract. It's like, it's not great. And I'm not I'm not trying to think, they do the whole WWE, AEW comparison, but the, the whole, was it Black Thursday, they called it, whatever. Mm. 
that that was a pretty shitty situation. And yeah. I'll, I'll give Tony his due for for the most. I don't uh, other than the CM Punk one. I don't recall too many where he's released them before the contracts without their request. No. So fair play to him. Yeah, indeed. And yeah, obviously, hopefully, Sonny will um, go on to find success on the Indies. And as he said, it could be another case of like Stu Grayson. Maybe we'll get to see Sonny again in the future Maybe. for AEW. Mm-hmm. Um, speaking of thing, people we got to see in AEW, Anthony. Yeah. So at All Out this week, uh, CJ Perry, aka Lana, the wife of Miro, aka Rusev, uh, showed up at All Out. She did. And, she did. Uh, she came down the ring. She, she hit Powerhouse Hobbs with a chair. She did. And then allowed Miro to get up from the distraction and then hit Powerhouse Hobbs with a chair. Yep. And then Miro looked at her and ran away from her. So, okay. <laughs> I mean, I feel like they're clearly starting some sort of story here. Well, um, it might have been nice think, to be a part of it. I well. think in one of the vignettes, didn't he basically, when he came back on collision, he like renounced his wife, renounced his god. So I think she basically he's basically is like I've renounced you kind of thing. So right. why are you here? not like who are you? Uh, yeah, again. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, it's done it over the Bobby Lashley thing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but no. Uh, so it's interesting. Apparently though, Tony. So he's brought her in. He said it was a fun moment for her to be there. I imagine that there's going to be something at least in the short term with these two. But she's not signed to any kind of contract or long term. Yeah. I always thought she had potential as a wrestler. That she worked really last in WWE. Never got fulfilled properly, and I would love to see her actually have a run. Like, I, I, from the basis of what we've got so far, I think she's going to do some stuff with uh, Rusev, yeah, but um, Miro. Um, but I, I would love to see her actually uh, be a part of the women's roster for a little bit and see what, like, see what we can, like, yeah, what we can do. And even if you know, because like a part of it, what we can do, it's like, <laughs> well, um, she's also been kind of working in like the acting side of things and stuff as well, hasn't she? So even if she doesn't want to get in the ring. She could still, there's a lot of parts you could play there, I think, that would add value, obviously, with Miro or even in some kind of, like, backstage or commissary type thing, you know what I mean, if she needed to. Agreed. Um, so yeah, I think there's value in, in keeping her around. Um, but, yeah, apparently no contract as of yet. Interesting stuff. Mm. Speaking of interesting stuff, Cal, yeah. I'm going to paraphrase this one a little bit because it was quite a long um, little conversation he's had here. But uh, Brian Danielson has been asked about his future. Future. And the fact that he returned awfully quick and, you know, fair play, consummate professional. They needed him. He came back, broken arm and not. Mm-hmm. Um, he gave tons of credit to Starks, which we'll talk about, uh, you know, the actual card, but he gave tons of credit to Stark for looking after him there. But um, obviously there's a lot of talk about his, his future. How long is he going to keep going? And he's talked, basically not give anything away, but ultimately said that he's got a lot of thinking to do. Um, and there's sort of, Talks of taking a, a higher creative role in AEW. I think that's probably seems to be his future, but he's obviously talking about his family life and stuff like that. Apparently, his little girl, I believe it was, um, is like constantly like, Oh, you're going to stop wrestling when I'm seven yeah. and stuff like that, which is yeah. that, that'd get me. I'd be like, Yep, yeah, definitely going to stop wrestling. <laughs> yeah, yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> Not going to upset you. Yeah. Um, so I get it. You know, he's got a family there. He wants to be around them more. Um, but as I understood it, you know, the whole reason he left WWE and, and came here in the first place is to have more freedom to to do this on his terms. So by no means have we seen the last of him. He's just not sure what the future is for Brian Danielson, how much we're going to see him or what role he's going to play. So You might say when it comes to his career, it's the final counter <laughs> because of the song at the entrance. <clears throat> um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. Uh, so there was talk, wasn't there? He was um he was helping Tony Khan out quite a bit. Yep. Um and working with him, flying everywhere with him and stuff like that, and basically realised that it was even more tight. It was almost like back in WWE days. I think where this is the thing where there. I think people really like him in a in a creative role and having that sort of responsibility, but it yeah. is quite time consuming, as you say. Yeah. But he's kinda of said now, Tony, that um it might play a bit better into um Brian's personal life if he's on collision on a Saturday. Because then obviously he's got more time at home. I believe there's room there now. With the kids and all that kind of stuff. So I believe there's room. I think there's some space uh, where he could uh, get involved. So, yeah, interesting. Um, mm. But I, I think he said something along the lines of he's got a big decision to make, hasn't he, over the next couple of years, what it is that he wants to do. Because um, obviously his kids getting older and stuff. He wants to spend time with them. He doesn't want to be away all the time. So, Fair. we'll see. But, Fair, Obviously, he's been selfish. We've just won him around. I know. Forever. But as as um, parents ourselves, you understand. You can um, absolutely get it. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, just hopefully he's happy. Whatever he decides to do is the main thing. <laughs> the children, I think. We just want him to be happy. We just want you to be happy. 
P. Bry, Bride, Bridey, Bridey. Oh. Um, but people who may be returning soon, uh, Anthony, is the one and only Jade Cargill. Now, this was another question that was brought up in the All Out Media Scrum um, with Chris Statlander sat right next to him. And uh, yeah, basically, when's she coming back? Tony said, hopefully soon. He's been having conversations with her. So I think it's the <laughs> case. Come back. It's like, no. <laughs> no. Come on. Any day now. Any day now. Uh, yeah, so apparently, yeah, conversations are ongoing. I think it's probably trying to find the right time to bring her back. Which is um, well earned break, in all fairness. So. Yeah, and I think, obviously, there is the fact that Stats was the one to beat her, and Stats said in, in the press conference she wants to prove it wasn't a fluke and she can beat her again and that kind of stuff. So there's a ready-made storyline for her to walk back into. If she then doesn't get that job done, then there's always the, you know, the world championship, women's world championship she go after. It's so. interesting. I think a lot of people have been speculating about, like, her not returning to the wrestling world. And I think she's sort of referenced that herself. And that seems to have happened with um, the likes of Paige Van Sant, for instance. Um, but I honestly, I don't think Jade's done with wrestling. I think anything she said has been like a bit of a work in some sense. Yeah. You know, she's been, being a bit playful on socials. Like, yeah, ah, I think so. Who knows, I may be done. Yeah. Uh, I think she's coming back. Yeah, I'd like to think so. Um, you know, she had a hell of a run. People, some people shit on it. Of course, they do the shit on everything, but... Um, you know, it was hella impressive, hell of a streak, and I think should she really cemented the TBS title um as her own. It was Indeed. you think of the TNT title of Cody and Darby and defending it every week and all that and you know, that's cool and all, but no one did what Jade did. So you can say what you want about it, whether she deserved the spot or whatever, but mm. she had the spot, she ran with the spot and it was yeah. good. So all right. I want to see her back. Um I think she's still got some cool stuff to do. But at the same time if she does decide that's it, then it's a pretty cool run that she had, to be fair. Undefeated for ages. And yeah. Indeed. Children's. Indeed. So, Carl, again, I'll keep this one brief. For those of you who are shocked that Jay returned and hadn't quit WWE, guess what? Jay <laughs> returned and he hadn't quit WWE. Um, I find it funny because th- this report's come from uh, from Fightful, who, um, you know, great media don't let them out when they go with them. I just find it funny because in part of the report he was saying about keeping um, his moves to the Raw roster, like, you know, closed and, and secretive, and you're like, but it, was anyone shocked? Like, I get that no one was probably aware of it, like, for definite. There was no, like, nothing built. But, like, was anyone shocked? Yeah. You know? I'm not normally a big fan of uh, Grayson Waller, but the fact that you said on the show, it's like, man, you've been gone, like, two weeks. <laughs> yes, totally, yeah. I mean, that was so fucking merited. Yeah. What I don't get for myself was, like, why, why did why did Cody have to announce him? Well. Like, what's Cody even got to do with this? Well, maybe we'll cover that off on, on the last one in a minute. Then. But, uh... But yeah, I, I I hated the way he come. Like, I hate that again. We're once again. I have nothing against Jay, by the way. I think he's got tons of potential. But I hate when WWE get an idea in the head, so they're just like, we're gonna force a nickname down your throat. So it's main event Jay Uso now. Yeah. Right. Which pisses me the fuck off. Right. Yeah. Because how does the how does that work as a nickname, especially if you end up putting slammed into the mid card at some point? Well, no, because it'd be on main event. Oh. Soon enough. Okay. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the fact that like Cody sort of announced him to the ring, like, what what is your job here, Cody? Yeah, are you an announcer now? Well, what's going on? I mean, we'll get to that, but I think um, like you know, Sean Ross Sapp and all that report on this say like try to keep it a surprise. Apparently, they're also WWE are meant to be super high on and being a main of like being that, a main that is main true. Guy. Yeah, so um, they are. Um, Can you see that? The, I I don't know. I think I don't want to sound too negative here, but I think. Raw this week sort of told me what they're trying to do and they're, they're cap- trying to capitalise on the uh, they're trying to have the cake and eat it they're trying to capitalise back on the Sami Zayn stuff and the popularity from the Sami Zayn and the Usi stuff and yeah. they're thinking they can recapture some of that magic whilst still doing something else with the Bloodline story and I think without the involvement of the Bloodline I think he's always going to be a great wrestler mm. and he's always going to get involved in, in some good stuff but is he going to be a main event guy in Raw? Uh, probably not I agree a hundred percent. I think you know Sammy is a prime example of that. Sammy was white hot. I know it was in Montreal as well, so that adds mm-hmm. an extra thing. Mm-hmm. But the whole Usi thing and him and Roman and that, that was fucking electric, wasn't it? People yeah. were like, "He should be the one. He should be the he one." Should. Um, for a while, people have gone, "That was the great decision," right? and then probably turned on him. But whatever. And he didn't do it. And now, no offense to him, is he on? Is he main event level now? Yeah. Sammy Zayn. He's well, not putting him anywhere near it. I think. Yeah. To be honest. But like, even if he was, even if they put him up against Seth Rollins, it'd be kind of like. It hasn't got the same thing, has it? No. Like it, there's a there's a time and a place and a yeah, purpose behind it. That was it. the time, and yeah. it's the same for Jay. Yeah. Without the bloodline, they're not. The story's not there, and I don't have the confidence that they will be able to 
give them that storyline when it doesn't revolve around the bloodline. Mm-hmm. No offense to Seth, but the World Heavyweight Championship has been shite, in my opinion. You know what I mean? Like, I oh, Shinsuke. Well, I mean, let's be honest. They treated it. They treated it disrespectfully <clears throat> from the off. They were like, "Well, no one's beating Roman, so let's make this silver medal." Yeah. It just that straight away was like, "Well, literally this... with a giant silver WWE yeah, logo." <laughs> so uh, I feel like the way they, the way WWE treated that belt doesn't help because it does feel like a consolation prize. Yeah. Um. But yeah, the super high on him, and you know, more credit to him. <sighs> super high on, high on Jay. So. Um. Feeling oozy now. <laughs> <laughs> um. If but, someone doesn't come uh, out, if someone doesn't come out with like a fucking brand of of the stuff for that, you know what I mean, to make uh, people feel loosey. Like I obviously, we're not purveyors. Does Godfather own a company? He does. We we know Godfather. Hit him up. Hit him up. Get on the smoke train. Um. Yeah. Sorry. Slight digression there. But I feel like you know more credit to him. I'd love to see him run with it and and make a success of it. Uh. Mm-hmm. You know, it's not uh when I'm being slightly negative. It's not about yeah. Jay, it's oh, about no. the way WWE. Yeah, Jay's, Jay's been killing it, like on yeah. every level from a promo standpoint. Like, I can't believe it's the same guy who was like fucking doing the whole, like, you know, well, look, stuff I've, with the face paint for a couple of. One other slight gripe, though. They, they needed a whole new theme. Oh, yeah. This on my own since day one is just bullshit. Yeah. Just have your own fucking music then. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. I'm on my own, but I'm still using my. In fact, isn't that Bianca? Isn't that just Bianca Belair's? On my own yeah. against the world. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Kind of. Basically, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. I I hope he does really well, but I don't have the uh, confidence he'll be a, a main player over on Raw. But yeah. Anthony, you asked, what's Cody going to do with it? Well, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> Let's talk about Cody Rhodes going to SmackDown because the reason Cody Rhodes was there and the reason he introduced Jay as the new member of Monday Night Raw is because apparently someone's got to go the other way. As a, It's going to be a trade. Uh, right, and Michael because yeah, Co- now we care about the roster split apparently. Um, and you know, uh, Michael Cole with his little did he get, get onto his thing he said about, um, oh, Cody used to be an EVP so he can get stuff done. And it's like, oh, um, but does it make sense for Cody to go over to SmackDown? Is that why well, he was there? Are they finally going to revisit the Roman Reigns stuff? I think they might at, but at I, this point. I like... also know for a damn fact because it came out the damn man's mouth, he wants to face John Cena. Look who's back on SmackDown for a room. See, it's stuff like this that, that pisses me off. Why? I mean, that's, that's a very brutal. Why to what? Why? Like, why? <laughs> why, why? Why is it important that he faces John Cena? Because he wants to. Is there any real history and there? Cody Rhodes. Um, that's good. Cody gets what Cody wants. Basically, yeah. Uh, because, Anthony, the reason why, because it's all part of the story that they planned out meticulously and the, the you know, super, they, they knew it all, yeah? is because they obviously want Cody to go against Roman. So they need to get him back towards Roman, but not yet. Because obviously... You know, cause That's why he's still this. doing side quests. Yeah. Um, so obviously he's got one of the uh, final boss John Cena guy to get through. So he's, he's beat final boss Brock. So is, he like, is, uh, is he like Goro or something now? Then? Yeah, basically. That's probably more Brock, isn't it? Yeah. Hmm, who could seen to be? Shang Tsung, he's invisible. Look at that. <laughs> Come on. Nice. Come on. Um, did you see what they did on Roswell, by the way? How's it taken that long for them to go? Uh, the Miz doing like a little parody thing where he was like, uh, here comes John Cena, and it's just the cameraman running down, filming nothing. <laughs> he gets in the, you know, does the whole nice. entrance, but Cena's not there. Um, so bad as I'm on the memes. <laughs> but yeah, so I think that could be why. The reason Cody was there is because he's the one going to get traded and they're expecting everyone to go, oh, what? Even though like everyone's like, well, fucking duh. And then you get that smirky fucking face the first time he's on SmackDown, comes yeah. down the ring with no real agenda. And goes, no. So what do you want to talk about? And we're all like, yeah. I don't know, Cody. Yeah. What do you want to do? You're just, here. just say what you want to talk about, So Cody. you want to That's talk about how you're back on SmackDown, how you bleed blue and white or whatever. Mm-hmm. And then... You'll probably just do you know what I think it is? Talk about your dad. And again, and I'll be honest. I love Cody. I know, like I shit on him a lot, and no, no, no more than you. Um, but <laughs> a lot, right? But <sighs> Cody is going to SmackDown because he wants to face John Cena. He wants to work with LA Knight, who's very over at the moment. Let's be honest. And then, <laughs> like, oh, the dumb stuff swore off. Exactly. Yeah, because he's like a fucking fly on shit, isn't he? Right? He's like, oh, I can get over this guy. So he's, I mean, his idol's Triple H. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> it makes sense. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I think I think that's what's going to happen. He's going to go over there. He's going to do a program with Cena, program that like night. Get to the Rumble, win the Rumble again, probably. Roman Reigns, three months worth of shit there. 
and again, typical WWE stuff, because I will I will moan about I, I I'm a big fan of Cody and I would like Cody a lot more if Cody didn't like himself so much. Mm. But hey ho. I um I'll moan about the WWE side of things of going like he has to go over to SmackDown to be able to to have matches with these people, even though LA Knight has just been on Raw yeah, fighting no, the mid yeah. and it doesn't seem to fucking matter unless they want it to matter. It still pisses me off. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, but yeah, I can't wait for Survivor Series when, like, like literally in a month, when he's like, "I bleed blue," and he's like, yeah. "You've been there." Five I'm minutes. the captain now. You've you're been like... there five minutes. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's what <laughs> this happened. is super important. I don't care about your friendships. <laughs> yeah. Um, that, that's my prediction anyway. Yeah. Um, but yeah, let us know what what do you think is Cody going to SmackDown by the time you watch this? Has it already happened? Who even knows? Let us know in the comments. Um. And yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you drop a like, hit subscribe. If you're listening to this, rate us five stars, baby. Download the episodes as well. And um, yeah, it sounds really um, bad saying yeah. like it's the only chart we care about, but the only chart we can actually see how we're doing is on Apple. Yeah. Apple. So yeah. if you've got an if you iPhone, know how we can see other charts. Yeah, tell us. Let us know. Um, but let us know how we do on uh, Apple Podcasts as well, because it's always mad when we're like, huh, we're in the top 100. That's not. Yeah. Well, ha, we're number 30 we're all like ha, we're number one in Bolivia because yeah that baby happened. Um, so yeah until next time hang on that's not what I say how do I close the show now we'll catch you on the next one catch you on the flip professionals